is a Ghanaian traditional harp uh, was discovered by Asantis through war. Um, and when you're talking about her life, it started from the sacred one. When you listen to the style of playing the guitar, we can see the element. It disappeared when the Western instruments, especially guitar, was introduced in the country. And fortunately for me, in around the 50s, my grandfather called Openini Ejaku had a dream, made six strings instrument. So he started playing them. Finally, he extended to eight and 10, 12, but I have extended to 14. So I learned it from my grandfather. Now, a lot of the songs were transferred onto the guitar, so the guitarist actually played the music that the Sepra was playing in the 1930s. But the Sepra were originally, when it was captured in the 18th century, it was captured from the Jiman people who live in Bonduku, which is northern Ivory Coast. And that's at the southernmost tip of the Trans-Saharan trade, uh, trading network that was controlled by countries like Mali in the medieval period. So that the, the instrument is actually related to the Kora and the harp lutes of the Sahel. So during that war, I think it was in 1730, when the uh, Ashantis conquered the Jiman Empire, they captured this instrument. It was covered in gold, actually. Well, they had it covered in gold. And the actual person who played it, who was a lame man, they brought him down to Kamasi. So he became the personal singer for the uh, uh, Osetutu, the Asantehini at the time. And only he had it. But after a number of years passed, the instrument was, the other sub-chiefs were allowed to get access to this instrument. And by the time Bowditch, a British explorer, was in Ashanti around about 1820, it had become a village instrument. So the instrument has sort of percolated, first of all, as war booty. But then it was sort of went to the, 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 the big chief, that is the uh, Santihini, then the lesser chiefs, and then the common people got access to the instrument. And of course, when you listen to the music, it doesn't in any way sound like Malian music. But there is a, 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 a relationship in the structure of the instrument. This instrument is a traditional instrument, so I don't have to be selfish. So I have to teach. When I started, I they started inviting me to a places, going for funeral festivals, playing for the kings, and I was getting money. So my father died early, but I did not even feel it because of this instrument. I was getting money to support my family. And people realized that, oh, if they look at it in the business way, at least we can also make money out of it. So they came to me. So it was a great opportunity. And when you go to a funeral, have a way of playing it. You know, let's say if you want to thank God, you just use the instrument and the, the voice, and you have to do the same thing. Like, <laughs> So you can see they do the same thing. But they also play with a sambo, with other traditions in the world. Even my grandfather also started with a small group, the Prince Prince, who had this one, drums, writer, and bell. And uh, we have all the voices, about three people, you know, also supporting without this. Thing. So we have different ways. But what I'm doing, Based on the, the traditional, just because I cannot do it without it. But sometimes I also modernize it. And uh, as we're here, if you ask me to sing a song, our reason of being here, you know, I can also come out with a distance and sing to suit the occasion uh -huh. because of what I've learned. <laughs> I'm 